Okay, so now we're going to take a look at uh, simplifying radicals. Okay, so to simplify a radical, the rule that we're going to use is this one that says if square root of a and square root of b are, and actually this works for nth roots, not just square roots. So if the nth root of a and the nth root of b are real numbers, then it turns out that the nth root of a times b can be factored into the nth root of a times the nth root of b. That can be a factorization into two radicals. And this is true as long as the nth root of a and the nth root of b are actually real numbers. So let's take a look at an example. All right. So let's say I wanted to calculate, let's say, the uh, square root square root where the index is the number 2 since I didn't write an index and I want to do the square root of 48 well what I'm saying here is that I can factor that and there are many factorizations if you think about it it could be the square root of 1 times the square root of 48 but that one is kinda useless because that just takes me back to the beginning because the square root of 1 is 1 or I could use uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 24. But the square root of 2 is also a number that's uh, irrational. I don't know the square root of 2. I don't know what number that is. And uh, the square root of 24, not sure what number that is either. Those are irrationals. I could try also hmm, the square root of 3 times the square root of 16. That one is promising because there's something special about the square root of 16. I think that's a rational number. Uh, let me see, there could also be the square root of 4 and the square root of 12 as a factorization of the square root of 48, right? And the square, oh, this one is special too, because that one is also special. Let me see, 5 doesn't go into 48. And let me see, it could also be the square root of 6 times the square root of what? Uh, 8? The square root of 48? And neither one of those is special either. So the ones that aren't really helpful, this one isn't really helpful because that just takes me back to where I started. This one isn't really helpful because both of those are irrational numbers. And for the same reason, this one isn't particularly helpful because both of those are irrational numbers. So the two that I'm really concerned with, the two that I that I want to look at are these two right here. These two factorizations are great because in each of those factorizations I have a number that is a perfect square or a rational square root. This square root right here is a rational number and this square root right here is a rational number. Any rational square roots are the ones that we're interested in. And if we take the square root of a rational square, when it's a rational square root, the number that we get is a rational number. So the square root of 16 is uh, 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then the irrational part just comes along. And this is equivalent. This is an equivalent factorization or this is a factorization of the square root of uh, 48 and it's nice because one of the numbers is is rational one of the factors is just 4 this one here also would factor into a uh, 2 because the square root of 4 is 2 square root of 12 but that one is less desirable because the square root of 12 still has a factorization that you can go through because square root of 12 you can look at as the square root of 1 times the square root of 12 
neither one of those is nice. The square root of 2 times the square root of 6, neither one of those is nice. Square root of 3 times the square root of 4. And there, we found one that we like, that one right there. So it turns out, you still have that 2. That 2 would still be a factor in all these cases, right? But this one down here is nice, because it's 2, it's the square root of 3, and then this one right here makes another factor of 2, and that 2 and that 2 makes a 4 square root of 3. So you see, you still end up with the same answer anyway. That's just a longer route, because this number right here is not... Uh, is not all the way simplified. You could simplify that number even further. So because that number isn't all the way simplified, we could go further and at the final, at the end, we we get the same final result anyway, 4 square roots of 3. So this is how that is done. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's say we're trying to find, um, let's do the square root of, uh, let's say, uh, 50. Well, for the square root of 50, that could be, uh, well, we'll skip the 1 times 50. That obviously is not the one we're looking for, but it could be square root of 2 times the square root of 25, or the square root of 3 doesn't go in, 4 doesn't go in, 5 times the square root of 10, and 6, 7, 8, and 9 all don't go into 50. So I think this is a list of all of all the factors here of, uh, of 50, and the only one that even has something that has a rational square root in it is this one. So that one is the one I'm looking for, and that seems to me to be 5 times the square root of 2. So the result there is 5 square roots of 2. And that, that's it. All right, this also works when we're dealing with higher roots. For instance, if we were dealing with the third root, for instance, right? Let's say we're looking for the third root of 24. Well, there's many ways that that one can be factored. There's many ways that that one can be factored. Like, for instance, we'll skip 1 and 24, but we could do the third root of 2 and the third root of 12. We could do the third root of 3 and the third root of 8. We could do the third root of 4 and the third root of 6. 5 doesn't go into 24. And there's 6 already, so those are the ways that I can factor it, excluding 1 and 24. The only one that's interesting is this one right here, because that's the only one that's rational. None of those other ones are rational, because 12 doesn't have any identical triplet factors, 2 doesn't have any identi identical triplet factors, other than 1, that is. Neither does 6 or 4, or 3, but 8 does. So, 8, what is... What are the triplet factors of 8? Well, the triplet factors of 8 are 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then, of course, we can't forget the cube root of 3 that stays behind. So this also works with cube roots and higher. Um, let's try one more cube root. Uh, let's make this one black. All right, let's try the cube root of, let's say, hmm, let's say the cube root of 54, the cube root of 54. Well, let's think of the factorization of, the, of that. Well, 1 and 54, I'm going to not waste time on. Let me see, 2 and uh, cube root of 2 and the cube root of 27, the cube root of uh, 3 goes in, right? 3, and um, let me see, 3 goes into that, uh, 18 times, I believe, 
18. So, all right. And then uh, let me see, 4. 4 doesn't go into 54. 5 doesn't go in. Uh, 6. 6 goes in. Let me see. That could be 6 times uh, 9. 6 times 9. 7 doesn't go in. And neither does 8 go into 54. And there's 9. So those are the factorizations. Let me see. Are any of these nice or interesting being that they have identical triplets for factors three identical factors to give me that number the only number i see on the list that matches that criteria is 27 because three times three times three is 27 so i can simplify this this gives me um three because three times three times three is 27 and of course we still have to keep the cube root of two so there is the simplification of the cube root of uh, 54. Alright, so this is how we simplify radicals.